is uh, SATCOM and Spectrum Management, Spectrum WRC, 23 outcome paving the way for future space needs. The session delves into Spectrum WRC, 23 outcomes, shaping regulatory landscapes. Explore India's journey to WRC 2027, its implications uh, for spectrum innovation and communication technologies future in the Indian market. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted to invite uh, on stage our next set of panel. Uh, uh, with a thunderous round of applause, please welcome our chair uh, of the session, Sri Vijay Christopher, sir, wireless advisor, Government of India. Welcome, sir. We will be joined uh, virtually by Mr. Bashir Patel, Senior Regional Advisor, Policy, Regulatory and Spectrum Management, Asia, Pacific, Middle East and Africa. I request our panelists to please join us on stage, uh, starting with Mr. Rajiv Kumar, Director, Engineering, Doordarshan, Prasar Bharati. Welcome, sir. I request Mr. Uh, Rashid Ali, Senior Advisor, Radio SIA India, to please join us on stage. We'll also be joined uh, virtually by Mr. Penja once again, VP Policy and Regulatory, GSOA. Welcome, sir. And I would now hand over uh, the dais uh, to uh, our chair, Mr. Christopher, sir. Yeah, thank you for the introduction. Uh, very good afternoon. Uh, thanks to SIA India for inviting me to this uh, session on spectrum management and uh, this uh, three-day Indian Space Congress. This is uh, it's a very big yearly affair. Anyway, our topic is uh, spectrum management and WRC and other policy issues related to that. So we, as the we have uh, the subject matter is WRC 23 outcome, a regulatory landscape towards WRC 27, spectrum innovation and communication technologies future in India market. As you know, spectrum management is not an abstraction. Actually, it is like a jigsaw puzzle. You know, we are bringing many things together and fixing it. It is there, it is a, a existing entity, but uh, you know, it takes time for everything. You need time, you know, WRC agendas are set at least four to eight years in advance. So it takes eight years in time to come to that agenda. Now we have a new agenda in WRC 23, which has been declared for the WRC 27. So. What is the purpose of WRC 20, WRC in general, you know, it is the main function is to update the frequency allocation table or FAT, they call it and to, you know, regulate to uh, allocate frequency for new technologies like IMT, IFMC, FSS, other uh, things, whatever is uh there in that new new technologies but it is a cautious approach by itu it takes mainly you know interference consideration as the main this thing which has to be uh, alleviated at any cost so this some of the time stringent uh, restrictions are put so the new technology which comes later they will have to face this uh, you know barrel of object i mean barricade of a uh, lot of regulations. So IMT, all these uh, uh, NGSOs which are coming, they are also going to face uh, regulatory uh, this thing. Now, you know, humans are fallible. They can make mistake. They can take wrong turn. But when you go and come back and make a course correction, that choice is there at sometimes it is possible sometimes our choices are final and irrevocable so like you spectrum allocation spectrum allocation is a uh, you cannot 
can allocate through administrative means or auction or de licensing there are three method methodology but once you allocate it uh, today and you find that it it doesn't fit in then you can later always review it come back and review it uh, how to dispense uh, spectrum whereas allocation as such it is an irreversible process once you identify a spectrum for a particular purpose then you know based on that government make policy r and d develops manufacturing happens development happens and industry grows then you cannot come back you cannot take a you know back track so so that is the dilemma we face you know uh, you know coexistence of different services like imt uh, satellite wifi imt you cannot have both you can have only one what once it is decided it is final you cannot go so these are the problems in spectrum management but our uh, topic is uh, you know what are the first we are going to listen to uh, the first uh, uh, speaker that is uh, mr bashir patel who is senior regional advisor policy regulatory and spectrum management he is going to give a talk on the wrc 23 23 outcome what are the challenges and opportunities and what and what is ahead for wrc 27 but what i am made to understand is that he is uh, not reachable so his presentation will be given by mr rajat ali sir is coming okay so he is he is there so i welcome sri bashir patel to this uh, program over to you thank you thank you very much uh, chairman can you hear me i'm audible okay Fine. Okay. Let me begin. Firstly, thank you very much, and let me thank uh, SIA India um, for the kind invitation for me to join this forum uh, this uh, afternoon uh, to talk a little bit about the uh, the outcome from the World Radio Conference in 2023 last year in November, and also talk a little bit about the uh, the agenda item, the future agenda items. addressing for the conference in 2027 um just to give you a little bit of background uh, i think uh i think what's been already presented um and outlined very quickly is is the process itself the the world radio conference is very much designed to bring together and harmonize basically spectrum issues uh globally um bringing together various countries uh normally you have about 170 to 180 countries participating in the conference and these are all administrations which come together to really have a common understanding on different bands different frequencies for different all kinds of different services that are being uh, considered and so on and it's a process it's a very lengthy process it's a a four year cycle as you can see on the slide next slide please So as you can see on this slide uh, the process is quite lengthy. Uh we have six regional bodies from starting with APT which India is a member of uh, Asia Pacific Telecommunity. Um they in provided something like 62 documents into the conference itself. Then you have the Middle East region ASMG, the Africa region A2A African Telecommunication Union, the Europeans uh CTEL which are the Americas and our cc on your left as you can see and these are six regions they provide a common understanding from the regional perspective and as you may know um globally the itu has three regions region 1 2 and 3 region 1 covers the uh, europe middle east and africa region 2 of the americas and region 3 is the asia pacific so we india is very much part of the region 3 group grouping and obviously we provide and work through the apt region in to provide our positioning uh, national positioning in some of the agenda items which were being addressed in the conference itself and so on and in addition to that there are various uh, uh cpa which is the conference priority meeting that happens at the beginning of the conference and also at the towards the before the six months before the conference itself which basically summarizes the positions 
global positions that are coming together from the six regions and so on. And then we have the big discussion within the conference itself on the different agenda items, and that then turns into final acts which are signed by the governments, including the Indian government. And these are this is an international treaty. This is an international treaty in terms of the acceptance of the decisions that are made by the conference itself. And that then, those final acts becomes the radio regulation internationally for administrations to adopt within the national frequency plan. So this is the whole exercise you can see here. Next slide, please. So this is just a little bit about the Dubai conference itself in 2023, which was November, six weeks long. As you can see, 163 countries participated. Something to the region of almost 4,000 delegates were there from all the different countries worldwide. Different levels of expertise from administrations and industry and so on. We've approved 43 new resolutions on different system services and spectrum and revised some 60, 56, if you like, resolutions as well. Uh, and also suppressed 33 resolutions uh, and so on. Uh, no surprises in terms of the issues, the contentious issues that were there for the conference. Agenda item 1.2, 1.3, 1.5. Um, I'll briefly touch on those in terms of what the outcome was. Uh, but as I say, global harmonization of spectrum is getting much more difficult given the variety of services that we have using these different bands. And of course, as many of you realize, spectrum is a very scarce resource. It's limited and it has to be finally balanced in a way to provide the services that we want. Uh, some of these services are quite critical, as you can appreciate. So there is has been a push for the last, almost I would say last 12 years, by the mobile industry to have more and more spectrum. So IMT identification is now by footnotes. Uh, countries have flexibility to use what is best in their national interest, of course. And in addition, uh, one of the things we find is the regional uh, regional uh, uh, organizations, the regional chairs of these organizations are becoming much more prominent in the decision making as well, because there are so many diverse views that we may need to really try and consolidate the positions. Next slide, please. Um, this is just giving you a very quick update, what I've already covered largely, basically updating the radio regulations uh, on the spectrum side. And you can see here, I think this is a slide I, I taken actually, there were 6,024 proposals, uh, which, which were basically covered in 967 documents. So you can see the volume of inputs uh, by the various countries and by regions and so on. Uh, and we covered more than 40 different agenda items, issues and topics at the conference. And the conference, as I say, we have the two weeks of the radio assembly and then we have the four weeks of the conference itself in trying to address all these issues. Next slide, please. So moving on to what actually came out, well, let me address major two areas. One is really related to the mobile industry and IMT. Uh, the, one of the main issue was the six gigahertz, which is agenda item 1.2. And this particular item was identified for different bands. So 3.6 to 3.7 gigahertz for region two, uh, with a country footnote for 14 countries. And for identification in the band 3.7 to 3.8 as well, uh, and so on. And then we had the band 6.425 to 7.125 gigahertz uh, for region one, again with a country footnote, um, and some countries obviously signed that footnote uh, to in order to provide, use the IMT in that particular band. Uh, for region two, only two countries uh, adopted that position with two f within a footnote, and then three countries in region three, um, basically Cambodia, Laos, and all these, I think there were, um, no other country signed up. In terms of the, the flexibility for the countries is to consider whether to adopt the IMT in this band or not. You need to appreciate the lower band below the 6.25, 5.925 to 
is already identified by largely worldwide, actually, by many countries to use for the Wi-Fi 6E uh, indoor indoor routers, if you like, the Wi-Fi technology. And of course, a Wi-Fi industry itself is looking for the upper six as well in order to have Wi-Fi 7 capabilities uh, with the most 1200 megahertz of spectrum. Nevertheless, of course, the mobile industry is also interested in the upper six gigahertz. Um, in case of India, as you can see here highlighted, uh, the band is used for VSAT services. The upper six gigahertz is used for VSAT services, TTNC, CDMA ranging, feeder links for MSS as well, uh, Antarctica connectivity for India as well. So the National uh, Committee uh, reviewed the India's position and decided to observe the development and not support any footnotes, uh, considering the extent of the utilization within India. Of course, that is still under consideration uh, within India. Uh, between the mobile industry and the Wi-Fi industry. But again, you know, you have to look at it from national perspective as well. Uh, but it's, it's a decision that the countries have to make themselves whether they want to have a licensed or unlicensed use of this ban uh, going forward into the 2027, where they may have a prospect to join the footnote if they wish to do so. So that was agenda item 1.2. 1.3 again which covered the band 3.6 to 3.8 gigahertz. Uh, again, a footnote was added, keeping the mobile service secondary in the, the 3.7 to 3.8, that 100 megahertz. Since the broadcasting industry again, is very active in India in that particular band, intensively being used for DTH applications and so on. Uh, so the fixed satellite services are very important, uh, not only just in Asia Pacific, but in African countries as well. Um, then we had other fixed wireless access technology using IMP technology again. The radio assembly adopted a new resolution on this, um, and it wasn't really considered for the, the World Radio Conference. We then also had discussions on Article 21.5 of the radio regulation, which is the protection of the fixed satellite service receivers. Um, <clears throat> The updates being made in the radio regulation. So basically, the idea was to how do we protect the the, uh, the satellite receivers, uh, and what kind of methodology can we use within the Article 21.5? And I think we we came up with the definition of the total radiated power, uh, and so on. So there's no be no changes have been made for the bands above the 30. This is below the 30 gigahertz band to use the TRP values, if you like. Um, in terms of future agenda items, agenda item 10 um, identified a number of different frequency bands for consideration during this cycle, uh, for the cycle started now for the next three, four years up to 2027, looking at 4.4 to 4.8, 7.125 to 8.4, uh, and so on. These bands are there as I outlined them on the uh, slide there uh, for review studies, sharing and compatibility studies that we need to carry out, obviously look at the existing users in these bands and see whether they would be made usable for uh, future future IMT applications and so on. Uh, critical that core KU band, uh, KU band is intensively used in India for both fixed satellite services and broadcast allocations, particularly in 10.7 to 14.5. This was avoided in this future agenda item as well, which is very important because we're preserving the use of FSS and BSS for existing services, which are quite critical. Next slide, please. Um, this is various agenda items related to the satellite side. And of course, there, there was a protection of GSO from NGSO. That was an agenda item seven, topic J. Uh, meetings on the NGS or aggregate limits are to start, but they will be limited to planning until ITU work on developing the methodology is completed. Um, so the, basically, the aspects of coordination between GSO and NGSO is important there. Again, there was the Earth Station in Motion, Agenda Item 1.15 and 1.16 for NGSO and GSO as well in KU band. Um, that was discussed, and again, um, you know, new filings have to be made, notification by administration responsible for mitigating any interference and so on. 
uh, various power levels and regulatory uh, measures were discussed and agreed upon and so on. Uh, 1.8 as well, which is the uh, links, basically, inter-service links. Um, again, IT will wait for the relevant, this is search and rescue uh, uh, planning activity uh, through the ICAO as well. And, and that's something that needs to be, that will be probably carried forward into the next agenda item. Uh, agenda item 1.17, inter-satellite links. Again, we have a new Latin SNKA band. Again, we have a new agenda item for 27 on inter-satellite links as well. This is basically operations in outer space between satellites, uh, between non-geostationary satellites, and it can be from non-geostationary to geo, and, and vice versa, communication, and so on, or within the network itself. Um, new MSS allocation for IoT, um, again, 1.18. That is under consideration. Did not allocate spectrum for this application. No studies were completed and so on. So again, we have a new agenda item. If you look at uh, when we get onto WRC 27, to look at IoT um, applications as well. Um, so there has been quite a few uh, you know, discussion on 17 gigahertz allocation as well in region two. That was adopted for region two as well. More spectrum there, 17.3 to 17.7. And finally, on the NGSO PFD limits in KA band, again, agenda item one dot, uh, sorry, uh, agenda item nine dot two again, um, where equations were updated to address for the larger constellations, uh, given the fact that we now have several hundreds, if not several thousands of satellites in a non geostation orbit constellation. Uh, therefore, we need to look at the limits, uh, how to protect both them as well as the GSO satellites and so on. So, in terms of the preparation for the WRC 27, um, you can see obviously the outcome from W23 and the new agenda items which are discussed, which I'll, I'll touch on in a, very briefly in a minute. Um, we had the first CPM 27 1 after the conference finished over three days. Um, that basically decided on the work that needs to be carried out for studies. Uh, with inputs from administrations and regions and so on. And then those studies will continue until basically right the way up to 2027, where we will then uh, put together the conference uh, prepared report, and that will then provide as a basis as an input to the conference itself. So that's the cycle. Uh, agenda item 10. Uh, these are the new agenda items for the conference in 2027. In total, 19 agenda items were agreed upon to be reviewed. So you can see the sectors. You've got fixed satellite and broadcasting satellite. Agenda item 1, 1.2, 1.1, 1.2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, uh, which are addressing different frequency bands and different services. You have the mobile satellite bands. Uh, agenda item 11, 1.11, 1 .11, 12, 13, and 14. Very interesting applications. You can, gonna, we'll, we'll just touch on that very briefly. Uh, and then, of course, fixed and mobile radio allocation services and um, protection of radio astronomy, uh, various other services, and so on. Uh, and science services, which is the, the radio astronomy aspects covering 1.15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. So there are four categorizations. Uh, if you like, and, and that are being addressed now by different working parties within the ITU and by the regions and nationally as well. And some of these obviously affect India in terms of the usage of these frequency bands, which again, the administrations and, and, and various parties within India will have to address over the course of uh, the next two or three years. Um, finally, the outcome from 23, uh, again, going through those future agenda items, uh, those, these are specific agenda items to be studied. However, there were non-WRC related activities as well, where technical studies um, to ensure continued protection of FSS and BSS, particularly under Article 22, um, again, without regulated consequences. Um, again, the, you know, the, there were matters that were related to uh, specific applications uh, and services such as the NGSO, the mega constellations, uh, which needs obviously needs to be reviewed in terms of their space sustainability, um, as well as for their protection of GSO. 
uh, as per the radio regulations and so on. So again, these are being this will be obviously studied during the course of uh, the the next the cycle. Uh, inputs will be provided and considered, but the priority has to be on the agenda items that have been uh, outlined for the conference itself in 2027. As I said, there are 19 agenda items uh, covering the four sectors. The, the most interesting aspect of it, and I'm about to conclude here, Mr. Chairman, sorry about taking a little bit longer, is the interesting aspect is really the agenda item 1.11, 12, and 13, as well as for no, agenda item 14. Um, the 1.11 is covering the space to space links, inter service links, which are inter satellite links, rather, uh, which are quite important. Uh, there are a lot of applications for that. And, and clearly there has to be, uh, you know, consideration given uh, with some studies and so on. Then there is the NGSO MSS low data rate allocation frequencies for that. Um, the more interesting one is the 1.13, which is direct to device kind of application using MSS and IMT bands with direct connectivity with handheld devices, such as your mobile phones you have with the, with the frequencies uh, operating in the lower lower gigahertz. Uh, and then 1.14 is looking at additional allocation in the 2 gigahertz. So there is a lot of overlap between these agenda items, which is important to know in terms of the frequencies below the 3 gigahertz. So I've tried to highlight that. Can we go on to the next slide? Sorry. And the next one. And the next one. And the next one. And the next one. So that's the slide where I just talk a little bit about the overlaps of these different agenda items on the right hand side and also the different frequencies that are being considered. Uh, and it's going to be important to try and home on to which frequencies can be used for different applications um, as we address them in 1.11 to 1.14 and so on and 1.15 as you can see. So there is a quite a bit of overlap between 11, 1.11, 12, 13, 14, and, and, and 15 as well. So that, that's something that needs to be. Finally, next slide, please. So the 1.13 is very much built on looking at innovation. And I think India is looking at this very, very much towards the 6G. So 5G will have the non-terrestrial network integration into 5G uh, to provide for additional coverage clearly where there is no coverage from the mobile sector um, and availability. So it's an extension, if you like, of mobile services into areas where we don't have mobile coverage uh, by putting in the satellite component, if you like, and building that in. And 6G further has a much further integration much more unified kind of network architecture. And that is important because we're looking at innovation, uh, collaboration between different industries, satellite and IMT industry, as well as looking at a balance in the spectrum between, you know, the evolution of different technologies uh, and the regulatory framework as well, uh, such that basically the whole of Indian subcontinent can be covered uh, with a combination of these different technologies. And that, it may, to me, by 2030, is something that's feasible, uh, possible, uh, that we, we can all have access to broadband connectivity with a combination of different access technologies built into devices which are affordable, uh, usable anywhere in India. Next slide. Thank you very much. I hope that was a very quick overview uh, on WRC outcome as well as looking forward to WRC 27 and what's in, what's in there for India as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Bashir Patel. Am I audible to you? Yes, yes, fine, Chairman, yeah. please. You have uh, covered uh, very exhaustively about all these uh, major important bands and other uh, whatever 23, WRC 23 has yielded. So I have a question on WRC 23, uh, if you can answer it. See, 6 gigahertz allocation you have covered, uh, but it has got a, you know, satellite dimension in India because this is allocated to fixed satellite services in India. 
so but uh, yep. identification of the 6 gigahertz band was only for region 2 there was no identification for region 1 and 3 so we uh, will have to wait for the next wrc to get it allocated or through footnote so what what are the chances for india to go ahead and uh, you know uh, for looking for this if india wants to have an allocation for imt in 2027 What are the prospects? Well, Thank you, Chair, Chairman G. Chair, Chairman G. The important thing here is the decision from the from the conference in 2023 was largely not to give a blanket uh, approval or identification regional wide. What they decided, and this is increasingly happening now, is to have a footnote. and give the countries the option to decide whether they wish to use that particular band nationally or not so when we look at the band uh, 6425 to 7125 um or in fact the 7125 to 7 7025 to 7125 that 100 megahertz at the top end was identified for region 3 already uh However the the band below that 6245 to 7025 that's uh 600 megahertz there that band is in a footnote and it's in a footnote for both region 1 region 2 and region 3 and in region 1 some countries some 14 countries identified themselves to use that band in region 2 uh only Brazil and one of the country I can't remember now two countries identified it and in region 3 three, uh three countries identified to use that band one was cambodia laos and uh, the third one was maldives now cambodia and laos we're already discussing it with cambodia and cambodia is actually not going to be using the whole 600 megahertz there 6425 to 7025 so in case of india given india's position and uh, an extensive use of the upper six by vsats and ttc and cdma mss and all the other different application it merits whether you actually want to use that for imt or whether you would allow to have it for indoor application indoor wifi 7 which is a newer technology which actually provides much greater bandwidth and capacity for indoor wifi application now given india's demographics and the, given india's population in urban areas you know we have massive population and you got fiber we got a lot of connectivity wifi wifi 7 would handle a lot of the large volume uh and it'd be much more affordable so it's a, it is a national decision um IMT spectrum is there there is a lot of it there is almost 20 gigahertz of IMT spectrum that is available today um and identified so do we need to allocate another 600 megahertz uh, could that be better utilized by the wifi sector by having 11 to 1200 megahertz of spectrum for wifi 6e and wifi 7 and and given indians demographics with 1.3 million billion people um you know i think wifi sector will grow rapidly certainly in metropolitan areas and also other major cities in india so i think we we need to you know think very carefully how best to utilize that particular spectrum and how it serves the masses rather than limits itself um given the fact that wifi is easily affordable and you have a new generation of router technology that's coming onto the market very quickly Thank you Mr Bashir for your comments uh now we will go to the second policy and regulatory from Jisova he is joining virtually so welcome Mr Peng Ziao to this session on this spectrum WRC 23 outcome challenges and opportunities so what way you want to proceed you want to give us a presentation or uh, can we directly ask you question what 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 way you want to proceed please 
Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Sir Christopher, and uh, for this uh, very quick uh, introduction of that slide. And then maybe uh, if you have any question, please please uh, proceed. Yeah. Does that okay? Does that sound okay for you? Yeah, sure. Okay. So I think uh, I just really have one slide to 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 to, to present. I think. Uh, um, Bashir, just before we has a, a, a presented extensively on the outcome of WRC 23, uh, I just want to reiterate a few things on the new agenda item for WRC 27, uh, if I can, because you know the, the, probably 80% of all the agenda items uh, for WRC 27 are satellite related. All right, so it's just like over 15 agenda items that has impact on the future of the satellite industry. So really, uh, from um, both the industry perspective, but also from uh, various administration, there's like a huge interest and the uptake for those things. Uh, because the, to be honest, the satellite ecosystem is really getting increasingly complex and the evolving at very rapid pace. And uh, so we really need to set the right framework. So I, I think Bashir mentioned that very quickly, but I mean, there's the a four different area that we have uh, for the WRC 27 agenda items, like uh, one is everything around fixed satellite service that is built uh, by the Working Party 4A, or the MSS services uh, the, the, that by Working Party 4C, and then some terrestrial services in study group five and uh, study group seven for the science services. And I think all these agenda items, if you look at it, especially the one for 4A and 4C, are really driven by you know two or three kind of a key uh, objective from the satellite industry one is to uh, to have a more efficient usage of existing allocation so that example is uh, uh, agenda item one or two here where we have uh, agenda item uh, the, the, uh, the frequency band 1375 to 14 gigahertz already allocated to fss but we want to have right now this technical limitation um, about the usage uh, because you only can use very big dishes of 1.2 meters for GSO and 4.5 meters for MGSO. So this agenda item is uh, reviewing this kind of technical limitation to say that we can use a much smaller antenna for both GSO and NGSO so that we can deploy that in the uplink for um, the new satellite system. Some other agenda items like uh, typically 1.1 or 1.3, for example, is looking at uh, additional services in those bands, in the Q, Q and V band for in the case of 1.1 and 1.3. Um, so introducing eSIMs uh, in that band or, or also you know allowing NGSO gateways. Uh, and by the way, that, that's a clear indication that you know, in a few years time, Q and V bands will become uh, very priced just like the KU band and KA band today. Uh, because as those KU and KA are getting congested by the satellite service today, um, the satellite industry is really looking at new frontier, uh, which is Q and V band. But also, uh, this, uh, some of the agenda items are driven by the innovation side. Uh, really, uh, I think uh, if we took all the mobile satellite services uh, that we have here, um, uh, 1 11, 12, and 13, and 1 14, are really looking at you know an innovative way to to provide this uh, direct to device uh, to provide you know directly uh, connectivity to the satellite, to the smartphone. And this is something that is very, very hot topics for the next four years. So all in all, I mean, with, uh, uh, I think also, you know, terrestrial service, uh, 1.7, I think Bashir already mentioned, there are bands there that doesn't touch the core um, uh, KU commercial bands. Uh, but of course, some of those bands are touching the X bands, which is used by government services on, on satellites. And some of our members are providing um, those uh, those government services. So we are monitoring that with a uh, um, uh, with caution. So and and so finally, the kind of the science service, you know, uh, of course, are extremely important. Uh, but if we take the you know example of a one dot sixteen uh, of the radio quiet zone for radio astronomy, um, this is something that is you know uh, we believe it's more kind of a national matter rather than uh, something at ITU. Because what they're proposing to do is to have uh, those uh, radio astronomy services use the full 
a frequency range from anything below um, below 200 megahertz to you know 30 gigahertz or something like that. So it's really uh, you know going over and above what they are really allocated for. Um, so it is something that of course will impact satellite service. So we are watching that with a um, you know with caution as well. So all in all, I mean, I think that the work's already started in earnest. I mean, if you were at the study group four uh, in May, it was incredibly busy. Um, you know, uh, we almost fell uh, at the end of the WRC cycle, even if WRC 27 is uh, three and a half years away. Uh, but there are, you know, a lot of more participation in those uh, groups, especially in the 4C, for example, you see like half of the room are mobile operators uh, or vendors uh, because of this kind of a convergence that we, we've seen uh, and the interest they have in some of those mobile satellite service agenda items. So with this, uh, I conclude my very quick uh, introduction of the WRC27 agenda item. So I'm happy for any question, of course. Thank you, Mr. Peng. I have uh, one question. Uh, you see, uh, three-fourth or most substantially it is allocated to satellite agendas in the WRC 27. So e, e, there is a th there are important uh, uh, allocation for NGSO uh, uh, in uh, agenda item 1.11, 1.13 uh, 1 .1, and 1.14. So with the explosion of uh, you know ngso satellites there is a potential uh, uh, for the industry regarding the connectivity between mobile phones and ngso satellite which is you know that is directly attributed to the agenda item 1.13 this presents an opportunity as well as challenges technical geopolitical and business intents will contribute complexities how how do you take on this how the industry is going to be you know especially we are moving from 5g to 6g what way this uh, merger of uh, uh, terrestrial network and non-terrestrial network are going to fan out that is that is the one question can you attend yeah, yeah. thank you thank you sir christopher and uh, very important question i think uh, one that's 13, uh, as uh, we show here, the MSS uh, uh, allocation in the IMT bands for direct to device. It is uh, one of the hottest topic uh, in the upcoming WRC27. Um, I think so the idea of this agenda item is to how to use um, existing IMT frequency bands, you know, in area where there's no mobile um, base station, where there's no mobile deployments, and allow that usage to uh, satellite operators so that they can provide service to those uh, to those areas uh, so basically it's uh, it can you know um, cover uh, all the kind of uh, non spots from the uh, all the black spot from the from the uh, mobile network coverage I think it is something that is you know beneficial for both satellite operators who can gain uh, a lot more kind of uh, uh, businesses but also very good for mobile operators because that's is uh, a way for them to satisfy, you know, the coverage obligation, uh, for example, in many countries, uh, which is part of the kind of a, a regulatory license, a license kind of a regulatory requirements. So it is something that, you know, both uh, from mobile industry and from the satellite industry, we looking at uh, uh, that as a very promising. Uh, and also, of course, it is something that can uh, help to, to, to bridge the digital uh, divide, and especially for people who has no access to any internet today. So between the mobile industry and the satellite industry, we started to have uh, a lot of kind of collaboration going on. Uh, as I mentioned in the previous session, uh, there's a kind of a cooperation agreement between GSMA and, uh, and ourselves, or GSOA. Um, so that you know we work together on the kind of uh, the technical uh, technical platform but also on the standardization work at 3gbp and of course in the, in the future all the kind of policy and regulatory implica implication as well and that extends at some point to the uh, wrc as well for the uh, 113 is to to understand you know how 
the two services can coexist. Uh, we will have kind of um, you know natural kind of geographical separation. Uh, as I mentioned, the main use case is really to deploy satellite services in places where there's no mobile services. So there shouldn't be any kind of uh, interference between terrestrial network and sat satellite uh, networks. But of course, there's a lot of kind of technical work uh, that needs to go in on uh, technical studies on how to how those things can coexist. And of course. Uh, also, not uh, not to interfere with existing other existing satellite services in this, um, in, in those in those areas. So, I think it's a uh, we, we are at the beginning of the really kind of uh, exciting time. Uh, there's a lot of uh, technical question and regulatory questions still going um, still uh, to be you know uh, investigated. Uh, but that's the direction that uh, you know we see uh, both industry converging. Hope that answer your question. Yeah. Thank you. That uh, it is nice to know that you are having a GSO, GSOA is uh, having an agreement with some kind of uh, cooperation with uh, GSMA. So united we stand. So I think that will have a productive outcome for all the you know stakeholders. Thank you very much. Please stand by. If any questions, we'll come back to you. We have two more uh, speakers here. Uh, now I will uh, invite uh, Mr. Uh, Rajiv Kumar. Uh, he is a director engineering from Prasar Bharati. He has got a vast experience in the field of, uh, you know, broadcasting. He has been with uh, Ministry of Information Broadcasting. So he he has, uh, you know, has something to talk about the challenges being faced by the satellite broadcasting industry. Now I invite uh, Mr. Rajiv. I would also like to thank uh, SIA, especially Sri Anil Prakash Ji, who is DG SIA, to giving me a opportunity to speak here. And uh, I would like to uh, say something about my organization, Prasar Bharti, which is an autonomous body of government of India, which has two verticals, Doodarshan and Akashwani. Doodarshan, everybody knows, and now there is one saying that desh ka pehla channel, desh ka apna channel. So, Doodarshan started the TV broadcasting in India and is still continuing with, uh, at present, I think uh, 36 satellite channels are there in various languages. And uh, it has one GKS platform as well, which uh, consists of 116 TV channels, that is free to air board and uh, 48 radio channels of Akashwani, our sister concern. And at the same time, this book includes 302 educational channels. That is remarkable. And Akashwani, uh, its motto is Bhajan Hitai Bhajan Sukhai. So, happiness to all. So, we are uh, trying to fulfill that uh, at our level. And that's why we are Kashwani original program in 23 languages and 179 dialects. So, Bhojan Hitai, Bhojan Sukhai is being implemented. Uh, here, I would like to, uh, because this is a satellite based uh, conference, so I want to highlight the importance of satellite uh, communication or satellite services. So, number one is that disaster prediction and disaster management is very uh, good with, uh, when we use the satellite uh, communication because uh, satellite-based services are very good predictor for the, for the disaster. Remote sensing satellites and others are used to predict the disaster. At the same time, whenever disaster is there, due to immunity to the local disaster, it can serve better. Satellite is providing smart governance, land management, urban planning, traffic management, etc. Strategic uses also because of its uh, immunity to the local thing and larger coverage. It can provide uh, better surveillance and better intelligence. Uh, then comes the direct to consumer services, which is called lot. Uh, now, satellite phones are old thing, satellite video phones, direct to home service of broadcasting, these are the direct to consumer services, and this is even being increased to direct to device. So, uh, that will further help. 
<coughs> because of this uh, many startups are coming up and they are using this satellite communication for developing various things even universities are uh, designing satellites and launching it and that is kind of uh, more and more employment generation for the country and because of all these advantages uh, satellite can uh, uh, can provide the better uh, resources to achieve the sustainable development goal of United Nations. It can provide sustainable urban planning, monitor and mitigate climate change, protect biodiversity, and provide education to the underprivileged population. Broadcasting sector is doing things long. Uh, through DTH, it is providing uh, many educational channels. At present, uh, even Dudashan DTH is having 302 educational channels, which is almost catering to the entire requirement of the country. And because of these many advantages, uh, satellite was always part of broadcasting. And uh, to just for information sake, satellite was first used in 1975 for broadcasting. That was an experimental uh, thing. Uh, given by ISRO and uh, do the uh, Presently, satellite is the main feeder link for all the uh, distribution platform. Uh, whatever is broadcaster uh, is generating, that is uplink to satellite and that is received by the platform service operator and they then distribute. Whatever may be the platform, maybe DTH, maybe cable operator, maybe OTT service provider, they receive it through satellite and then redistribute to the consumer. Because of this only, uh, actually, uh, satellite, uh, this broadcasting was started in terrestrial mode by Dudarshan through a tower to the consumer. But at, when uh, satellite uh, communication established in India in something around early 90s or mid 90s, we can say. So then only broadcasting actually for flourished. And because of the advantages, right now we have more than 900 TV channels in India. <coughs> and uh, Doodarshan also provides 36 TV channels. We have four DTH operators. And in addition to the uh, Doodarshan uh, thing, and presently, I think uh, 65 million paid DTH subscribers are there. and. Uh, around 45 million subscribers are there for Doodarshan DTH. Uh, as Sir has told me, uh, there are certain things which I wanted to convey about uh, WRC 23 and WRC 27. So, before going to that, I will uh, come to the point of uh, 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 Chairman Sir that what are the challenges being faced by the broadcasting industry with respect to spectrum. So, as satellite is the backbone of the broadcasting, broadcasting industry, it requires sufficient transponder to cater to the need of the people and to provide a facilitate broadcasters to provide their services. So, it will require more and more uh, uh, transponders to increase the number of channels in the bouquet and also to provide more HD quality content, even in future, maybe ultra high definition, maybe even now. So for that, we need more and more spectrum, a more and more uh, transponder. And to have sufficient transponder, we need uh, sufficient spectrum so that we can provide the services. Another factor which is coming uh, now into the practice is the uh, lowering of the guard band. The number of services are increasing, number of requ uh, spectrum requirements are increasing, so guard banks are being reduced. So because of this, we are facing the challenge of interference. That is, maybe in-bank interference or out-of-bank interference. I want to quote a specific example of C band downlink that is 3.7 to 4.2 gigahertz, which is used by the uh, broadcasting industry. Uh, earlier, the 
आई एम की वॉज अप टू थ्री सिक्स जीरो जीरो एंड नाउ दिस हैज बीन इंक्रीज टू थ्री सिक्स सेवन जीरो सो गॉड बैंक इज रिड्यूस फ्रॉम हंड्रेड मेगा हर्ट टू थर्टी मेगा हर्ट एंड दिस हैज लॉट ऑफ प्रॉब्लम बिकॉज दिस विल रिक्वायर स्पेसिफिक मिटिगेशन टेक्निक दैट इज टू बी एडॉप्टेड बाई दी ब्रॉडकास्टर एंड एट द सेम टाइम द केबल ऑपरेटर्स आर डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन प्लेटफॉर्म ऑपरेटर्स डी पी ओज दे हैव टू फिक्स समथिंग टू अवॉइड द इंटरफेरेंस एंड इवन वी कैन सी फ्राम दी डब्ल्यू आर सी एजेंडा आइटम्स एजेंडा आइटम वन पॉइंट थ्री वॉज देयर टू आई एम टी फाइव थ्री सिक्स जीरो जीरो टू थ्री एट जीरो जीरो फॉर आई एम टी एंड दैट इज टेकिंग केयर दैट इज टेकिंग अवे समथिंग अराउंड हंड्रेड मेगा हर्ट बैंक फ्राम दी सी बैंक डाउन लिंक विच इज बेसिकली बैक बोन ऑफ दी ब्रॉडकास्टिंग इंडस्ट्री बिकॉज इट इज ए फिगर लिंक फॉर ईच एंड एवरी प्लेटफॉर्म सो देयर वी नीड टू हैव ए बेटर प्रोटेक्शन एंड फॉर्चुनेटली इन दिस डब्ल्यू आर सी ट्वेंटी थ्री द एजेंडा वॉज फॉर द रीजन वन एंड दे आर आल्सो वेरी फ्यू कंट्रीज ओनली आइडेंटिफाइड दिस एंड दिस इज बेसिकली अवेलेबल फॉर रीजन सेटेलाइट ब्रॉडकास्टिंग इन रीजन थ्री आई वॉन्ट टू गिव वेरी ब्रीफ अबाउट द आउटकम ऑफ डब्ल्यू आर सी ट्वेंटी थ्री एजेंडा आइटम वन पॉइंट थ्री आई आलरेडी टोल्ड दैट थ्री सिक्स जीरो जीरो थ्री एट जीरो जीरो विच वॉज मैटर ऑफ कंसर्न फॉर ब्रॉडकास्टिंग इंडस्ट्री इट वॉज फॉर रीजन थ्री एंड देर वॉज ए लिमिटेड सक्सेस एट दैट लेवल एजेंडा आइटम वन पॉइंट फाइव वॉज फॉर यू एच एफ बैंक विच इज नॉट सेटेलाइट बैंक बट दिस वॉज आल्सो फॉर रीजन वन ओनली एंड देर वॉर सम सक्सेस फॉर रीजन वन पीपल फॉर आई एम टी थिंग but is still that is available for the broadcasting cashier broadcasting apart from that there was good uh, outcome for agenda item 1.15 1.16 1.17 and agenda item 7 for satellite broadcast uh, satellite industry in general not broadcasting and we can see that uh, uh, wrc 27 is basically wrc for satellite services as chairman sir also told that around 3/4 of the agenda items are on the satellite to be precise 10 out of 19 agenda items 1.1 to 1.6 1.11 to 1.14 these are uh, satellite agenda items there are various uh, issues and uh, technical issues involved here for the broadcasting industry uh, we have identified 1.6, 1.9, 1.10, 1.11, 1.13, and 1.17, which is going to be uh, studied and deliberated at national and international level. Here, working party six A of study group six is working out, and uh, at the national level, national study groups are there, national working parties are there. We are working together, and we'll get something better uh, in the WRC 27. Thank you, sir. thank you rajiv ji you have covered a uh, whole spectrum of uh, issues uh, in this uh, broadcasting uh, we have uh, you know final uh, speaker mr uh, ranjit ali he is a senior advisor from sia india so now i will invite him uh, you know spectrum everybody every industry needs spectrum yes but the main main issue is uh, regarding how to prevent the interference when it is national issues but in international issues is concerned you know how to respect the uh, you know uh, or authority of each countries that means if you mo pump more power to the uh, in the imt this can go and uh, hit the satellite on the border countries yes there these are the challenges we will have to respect the all other countries to you know coexist so these are the issues now i will uh, welcome uh, mr rajat ali to cover uh, what are the, uh, some of the issues which he uh, related to the wrc 23 i invite him thank you mr sir uh, good evening good good afternoon everybody and i thank the organization also for the opportunity 
Uh, my previous uh, speakers, uh, they have completely covered uh, Mr. Basir Patel and uh, Peng. All the agenda very clear. So I want to uh, highlight the portions which are more relevant to the satellite. You know, uh, there are two aspects to the WRC process. One aspect is that WC, uh, the, the, the conference discusses the agenda items which, which was pre, uh, preset in the previous conference. And all the administrations, they discuss, negotiate and come to a consensus, decision is taken. Another aspect is that uh, they set a uh, uh, what do you call uh, agenda item for the next conference. So these are the main two aspects of the uh, conference. In my opinion, I can uh, you know bring, um, uh, give a four short use of the outcomes of the uh, last uh, uh, WRC 23 because we, all the three attended the WRC 23 in Dubai. One one is that you know uh, uh, it gave more opportunities to the stakeholders to use the spectrum and orbital resources in an innovative and broad manner. Second one is that, you know, this uh, bridging the digital uh, divide is a very important thing. So the conference recognizes the need for the satellite role in bridging the gap. Number three, uh, uh, it recognizes the role of communication on the move. That is, estate, they call it uh, IT parlance, estate in motion. For especially on, they are all non-safety non related aeronautical and uh, maritime communication. In addition, they will cover terrestrial uh, vehicles also. For example, train, your bus, car. So that is, that, uh, so the co band and core band will be uh, extensively used. So another fourth point is that, the WRC 27, all the agenda, almost 80% of agenda items, it is only for satellite, so, in my opinion, we can call the WRC 27 as a satellite conference, not as a, I mean, you can very well call because 80% of the agenda items are satellite agenda items, especially as told by Mr. Basir and Peng, you know, this, uh, we are, the IMT bands are considered for uh, satellite communication. That too, normally the IMT band study is considered by working party 5D at ITU level, but it's a, this is a deviation, now they are going to a satellite group, 4C is going to study the, this one. So number three, Q and V bands are go extensively used for again the, um, for satellite communication. The WRC twenty seven of the of the competitive studies. Uh, you know before the WRC, radio assembly is uh, uh, convened for a first first week. Radio, then only WRC it succeeds WRC. In the radio assembly, the sustainable use of space was when a solution was adopted. Solution seventy four that seeks all the administration's cooperation for a sustained use of spectrum and orbital resources. That is the main, what do you call, outcome, we can say. Because unless you should show uh, sustainability is not maintained, we will not be able to, our uh, next generation will not be able to use the frequencies. This is the more important thing. Another thing is that, you know, radio regulation board also another administrative body of this. Eh? So on the silence of WRC, radio regulation board also convened. Practice is that on satellite, eh, coordination, frequency coordination and uh, orbital coordination done by the operators before putting it to use. But it is not in practice done. So, a lot of interference is observed, and so many users, countries are unable to use the both spectrum and orbital resources. So, this radio communication, uh, radio regulation board took a recommendation in this WRC 23 only, and that allowed 41 countries to use the spectrum and orbital, orbital resources for satellite broadcasting. So, this is a major achievement of the conference during the conference. Another thing you might have heard is is very much a satellite related issue. You know, this uh, you might have heard that a Malaysian air aircraft was lost. So, during that time, plea potential conference uh, was adopted. They made a ADSB, Automatic Deployment uh, Dependent Surveillance Broadcast. It's, an, it's an, one of the equipment used by the navigational equipment used by aircrafts. So, that was more made satellite based in the 2015 WRC. The so same way, now the VHF. Very high frequency, 118 to 137 MHz. It is used by aeronautical, this is a aeronautical, global aeronautical frequency. So they may made as a space based. So that is going to give a, what you call continuous coverage will be there, which ATC and uh, pilot will have a continuous coverage. This is a major achievement of the conference because satellite is based communication, that is. Another thing is that, you know, WSO 2015, uh, you, you heard that unmanned aircraft systems. For non-payload control, control and non-payload CNPC, they call it CNPC. 
it was in non segregated air force that is more important non segregated air force means presently you can use only for segregated air force air force between civilian and is separated now so when it comes for non segregated air force they have to use eas also within the air space only so safety is more important so when resolution was adopted in 2015 i was also involved that resolution so that one resolution 155 so this wrc 19 23 took a decision to freeze the resolution that will be again reviewed in 2000 uh, uh, sorry uh, yes 20 to, to 27 wrc so what they are going to do that they will review how this now present condition is that icao international civil aviation wants that this safety related issue will be dealt by fss operators because they are going to use fss links for the communication for a cnpc communication but fss operators are telling so it is not our responsibility icao has to maintain the safety card so this is an issue to be resolved once it is resolved satellite is going to uh, use a play a big role in this es operation also i have few more points but this is, uh, time is not there so i conclude this my presentation thank you very much thank you mr rajit ali so i think uh, he has worked in the aeronautical navigation aeronautical communication field for long time so he has that interest still with him so he has covered those issues uh, very beautifully so hope i think we will see him in further uh, wrc 27 also <laughs> so we we have a time limitation so of uh, uh, coming to the you know one hour uh, duration we have given to us but uh, you know uh, in 2023 there are two events happened one is uh, uh, spectrum uh, sorry space policy was approved and the second thing is indian telecom new act was also passed so those two events will uh, give a you know is a positive things for the industry in the space sector now as per the estimate now indian uh, industry contributed 2% of the global share of space economy in 2021 it is going to you know expected to rise to 8% by 2030 and 15% by 2047 so this uh, regulatory challenges you know this can leverage the uh, the industry in uh, in the coming years so how fast regulation can you know uh, catch up with the technology that is also quite important so with this uh, remarks i conclude uh, um, i conclude this session and i would i would like to thank uh, the virtual participant mr ba mr bashir and mr peng and uh, here mr uh, uh, <laughs> our uh, fr my friend uh, from uh, broadcasting and uh, mr rajiv and mr then rajit ali thank you very much thank you gentlemen uh, for this incredible session and uh, sharing your valuable insights with all of us uh, i thank our expert speakers mr peng jao and mr bashir patel for joining us virtually and taking out time and sharing their presentations with all of us i request uh, uh, our uh, chair uh, mr vijay christopher sir to please present a memento as a token of love appreciation and gratitude to our uh, panelists firstly to mr rajiv kumar sir thank you so much for joining us to mr rashid ali thank you so much sir for sharing your insights with us i request mr anil prakash sir director general uh, ci india to please join us on the stage and present a memento to our chair mr vj christopher sir May I request our panel to please pose for a group photograph as well and request Anil sir to please join them. 